Hi, in this video we're going to look at 2.4, which I can, which is I can solve absolute value inequalities. Again, this is your math intervention video to hopefully move up into the meets category. Now we're going to look at, take a look at three problems together, and then I'm going to have you do some on your own. And then obviously you'll set up that interview with your teacher. So here's our first problem. Uh, you can see it's the absolute value of 2x minus 6 is less than or equal to 4. All right. So here are the steps on how you guys solve this problem. Uh, this one is ready to break into two parts. Uh, just like we did when we solved equations, we're going to say this 2x minus 4 uh, can either equal 12 or a negative 12. And, and with the inequalities, it's a little different, but that's what we're looking at here. So let's go ahead and write it. So we're going to say 2x minus 6 can be less than or equal to 12. Uh, this sign right there is important. That tells us if it's an and or an or statement. All right. And in this particular one, this is going to be an and statement. And if you recall, all of our graphs with and statements will have like, you know, they might be an open or a closed circle, but they'll be going towards each other like that. So we kind of have an idea what this is going to look like real quick. I'm just going to write the word and in between my two inequalities here. Uh, the other one is we're going to write 2x minus 6. And we have to see when you kind of look at that and compare it to when it's a negative 12. When we make that a negative 12, we have to flip the inequality sign. All right. So you're actually solving two separate inequalities for this. So let's go ahead and solve it. And then we'll graph it, see what it looks like. So in both problems, we'll add 6 to both sides. So maybe I'll do that at the same time here. So we're going to add 6. We get a little bit different answers. We get 2x is less than or equal to 18. And 2x is greater than or equal to negative 6. Now we just need to divide by 2 in both of them. So we'll do that next. Divide by 2, divide by 2. And we end up with x is less than or equal to 9. And, and again, that's an important part. I always like to write that word and there. So there's one of our answers. And x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And there's a second one right there. So those are the two inequalities that we have. And let's go ahead and graph it just to see what it looks like. So we'll make our number line here. Uh, these are usually a little more complicated to graph than they were maybe in unit uh, 2.3. But I'm just going to try to make myself have some equal intervals here. So I decided to go by threes because they were both multiples of three. Uh, let's graph the first one. X is less than or equal to nine. That's going to be a closed circle with a line headed in that direction right there. Those are all the numbers less than. The other one, X is greater than or equal to negative three. Again, another uh, closed circle at negative three. And again, we're going in that direction. You can see how they go towards each other, uh, which means that these are going to be all of the answers right there. It has to work in both inequalities. So again, I could pick any of these numbers, plug them in, see if they work. Uh, let's just try zero real quick. So if I take a zero and go and substitute it back into the original inequality, it should work because that's part of our solution set. So we'll just do it in our head real quick. So two times zero is zero. And so we end up with the... Hey, bud. Done? Yep. All right, cool. I'm just making a video, so you're going to be on my video here. But don't worry, I'll delete your, your voices off. Unless you want to say something cool. No? Okay. <laughs> so we end up with uh, just the absolute value of negative 6, because 2 times 0 is 0. We know that is equal to 6. And that's going to be a true statement. 6 is less than or equal to 12. So again, the 0 works. All of those numbers in between and including negative 3 and 9 would work. Anything away from those um, or, or larger than those would not work. Uh, maybe we should just try one real quick. Like if we took a 10 right here, so 10 would be somewhere over on this side. If we plug the 10 into this guy right here, that should not work, right? Let's just prove it real quick. 2 times 10 is 20. 20 minus 16 is 14. We take the absolute value of 14. And that ends up being 14. And in this case, 14 is not less than or equal to 12. So we know 10 is not a solution to that. Uh, it's always good to check it. So that's how you guys do a problem like that. Let's go ahead and try another one. So we're going to come over and look at this next one right here. Uh, in this particular one, biggest mistake students think they need to do with this one is they think they need to distribute the 4 uh, into both items right there, uh, or like distribute it to the negative x and to the uh, positive 3. And I see, um, I see that happen all the time. We can't distribute uh, because absolute values are treated differently than parentheses right there. So instead of di uh, distributing, what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides of this equation, or excuse me, this inequality by 4. That will get rid of the 4. 
on the left side, and we end up with a 5 on the right side. And so what we have here is we have uh, the absolute value of negative x plus 3 is greater than 5, all right? Now at this point is when we can break it into the two parts because we just have the absolute value of our x plus 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So we end up with negative x plus 3 is greater than 5. Now, this inequality will tell us something important as well. In this case, this is an OR statement, all right? And if you recall, when we do a graph of an OR statement, we have like two circles, and the arrows are going in opposite directions like that. So that's what we're, what's going to happen here with this one. So let's keep going. Uh, the other one will be negative x plus 3. We do need to flip the sign around because we're making it a negative 5. Let's go ahead and solve both of them here. Uh, in both of them, we will subtract 3 from both sides of our inequality. So we end up with negative x is greater than 2, or uh, negative x is less than negative 8. Now, a lot of people still mess up with this at this point because they see they think they're done because they just see the x there. <coughs> we do need to divide by negative 1 on both sides because we could technically put that 1 in right there. It's, it's really a negative 1 right there. And that's really important in this problem because when we divide by a negative 1 or any negative number with absolute value um, or with inequalities, we do have to flip the sign. So we get the first inequality looks like that. X is less than negative 2. Or we will flip the inequality sign and say X is greater than than 8. And those are going to be our two inequalities right there. Let's graph it just to see what's going on here. And then we can obviously check answers as well. So let's just go negative 2. And maybe I decide to go by 2s in this one. So 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And the first one says x is less than negative 2. Open circle at negative 2. And those are going to be all the numbers less than that. Uh, the other inequality, x is greater than uh, 8, will be an open circle at 8 and a line headed to the right. All the numbers greater than 8 would be answers right there. So that's what our graph looks like. And again, anything that is on either side of that would work. Let's just pick, let's just pick a number that we know uh, will work. Maybe we do a pretty easy number. We know 9 should work because 9 would be like the next number right here. So again, if I take 9 and bring it all the way back up into that original problem, let's we'll see what happens. We end up with negative 9 plus 3, which will be negative 6. We know the absolute value of negative 6 is 6 and 6 is greater than 5. So that does work. That does prove to us that that works. If we checked any numbers on the other side of negative 2, those would work. Any numbers including negative 2 and 8 that are in between there would not work for that problem. All right. Um, I just want to go talk briefly about another example. We're not going to do this whole problem here. Uh, but if we do end up with uh, we, we get rid of everything on the left side and all we have left is a negative number on the right side. Um, we, we have some, in, some, some situations that will happen right here. So if the inequality looks like that right there, so we're saying uh, it's less than uh, negative 2. Now, I don't care what you plug in for x. Let's just think logically about it. Pick any number you want for x. Let's pick a 10, for example. If we put a 10 in for x right there, we would get 7 because 10 minus 3 is 7. The absolute value of that would be 7. And we look at this and we say, is that a true statement right there? And it's not. So no matter what you plug in for x, um, it doesn't matter because when you take the absolute value of that, you are going to get a positive number on this side right here. If we get a positive number, kind of where our 7 is right there, won't that always be bigger than the negative 2? It doesn't matter what it is. Even if we get a 0 on that side, um, you know, if we plugged in a 3, 3 minus 3 is, um, is 0. The absolute value of that is going to be equal to 0. That's still uh, doesn't work for this particular example. So there's nothing we could plug in. No negative number, no positive number, nothing works. So the answer to this one right here is no solution. Okay. Now a weird thing will happen, and sometimes students will get a little confused when this happens. So let's just do a different one real quick here. And we get x minus 3. Let's just do the same problem, but let's go greater than negative 2. Same principle applies here. Students will say, oh, no solution then. That's not the case for this one. Because Let's go back to our, you know, our 10 that we plugged in. Let's say we plug in that 10 right there. All right, we get the absolute value of 7. It's going to be 7. Isn't 7 greater than negative 2? No matter what you plug in for x, you'll take the absolute value of it, and this, where that 7 will be, will be a positive number. So this is going to be positive. Won't a positive number always be bigger than or greater than a negative number? You bet it will. So if you ever have this situation, you will say, uh, usually we write down the answer is all real numbers.
All right. So you got to look at it, think about it, um, which is a little bit of, in my opinion, common sense with this one and try to think about what's going on right there. So uh, let me just put a box around this one so you guys can study the difference between the two. Um, so again, it all has to do, well, that's kind of crazy. Uh, we put a pentagon around it apparently. Uh, but when you guys look at the two of them, uh, you can see that the top one is going to be no solution. The bottom one will be all real numbers. So when you get the negative numbers on, on the one side, you know, you can kind of just stop, think logically about it, and hopefully you can come up with that answer there. Hopefully that helps. Um, here's your set of practice problems. So there are uh, six of them. So you're going to solve graph and obviously check them just like we did with the other ones. There's a word problem there too. After you've done that with those problems, please set up an interview with your teacher and your teacher will hopefully get to move you up a level if you can show you know how to do this stuff. Thanks for watching and we are done.